Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at our Cursed City models and we're looking at the bad guys today. Uh, basically the opposition force for your heroes to go against. Now, um, there's a lot of interest in this set because there's a load of items for the Soul Blight Gravelords, which is of course is a brand new uh, army book that's out now. And, you know, it comes with a whole bunch of other stuff as well. It is, of course, a, a Warhammer Quest game, and it comes with all kinds of little bits and pieces. Now, um, side criticism, uh, it would be really nice to have been able to use these models in existing games. I think we can do the rat swarms with uh, Skaven and things like that. But, you know, taking out the rat swarms and the bat swarms out of the... Uh, out of the army books uh, just as we're getting models for them that are really cool kind of sucks So hopefully there's some kind of update later on as they're known to do for sure uh, So the first thing we're starting with here is kind of you know, there's objectives you'll see in here. There's um, You know little bits of icons things like that. My plan ultimately is to use all these guys uh, for you know, just kind of unit fillers just kind of mixing them in like having the you know, having the gravestone here, uh, I'm sure some people can use them as grave sites, things like that. But um, I think I was just going to use them as unit fillers and just kind of keep them in the background. And we can flesh out, you know, a skeleton horde or, you know, zombies if we need those extra units from getting the casualties. Okay, so looking at the models, uh, I'm really liking the, 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 the rat swarms here. Let's start with these guys. One of the things I really think is nice is you can see it with like the Necron Scarab swarms and you can see it with the, these rat swarms here is it's really nice just to be able to have a little bit of volume, a little bit of animation. Uh, even the nerglings are kind of going that way now, where you've got like, you know, just kind of piles of them all kind of rolling forward. Uh, you know, the Tyranids have their Ripper Swarms, you name it. So I really like the look of these guys. Um, you know, if you're using contrast as your primary kind of painting scheme, they'll get painted up so fast. And then you just need to pick out a few kind of major details in there. And I'm sure that'll make all the difference in the world. Um, loads of detail with these guys. You know, they're all kind of hopping on top of each other. They're, you know, they're all kind of, you know, like piggybacking each other. And they literally are just swarming uh, towards wherever they're going for. So I really like that. I think it's pretty cool. Might be a little tricky to get, uh, you know, your sand and your grit and stuff inside there. It might have been worthwhile to do the base um, first. But, um, you know, I just thought I'd take a look at these guys for the for the review. Uh, I'm sure with the Skaven stuff, uh, I want to do a little bit of Skaven stuff just for the, the Nurgle guys. And uh, I think these guys will make their way in there for sure. But all in all, pretty nice looking models. Uh, the tails obviously are going to be a little more fragile. But, you know, clumped together, you can grab them from the sides. And I, I really like that. So they're not crazy brittle. Uh, sticking with this, the, the kind of the theme of the swarms here. Uh, the bat swarms are fantastic. Now, what's sad about these guys is, again, like I was saying, they're kind of pulled from the book now, and um, it's too bad. I, mean, I think they're really, really neat. I think they, they did a great job. Now, there's obviously some duplication uh, because they had the two different, or two similar sprues, I should say, but uh, I don't mind them at all. I think they turned out really, really nicely. You know, they are definitely little bats kind of all going together. Uh, I like that they're kind of kicked off instead of just being on stands. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the version before, but it's literally bats standing vertically on stands. So this seems a bit more like bats kind of rushing around, uh, you know, items and, and kind of going after the, the players. Now, of course, you got the different sizes of bats. You've got your extra large bats up here. And uh, yeah, I think it's just nice to have that little bit of variety, that little bit of symmetry. It could have been very, very easy to have just a big pile of bats all kind of the same size. Now in the games, it'll be nice to be able to see these guys, uh, you know, playing out there. Um, for some of the narrative stuff that we're doing, I'm sure the bat swarms will make their way back uh, with the similar rule set type of thing. But yeah, I like the I like the different size variety in these guys. I love again the you know that they're kind of going off the pillars for their elevation gain. I think it was these were really nicely executed. Again, too bad that it was uh, just a little bit too late, I guess. Anyway. Um, moving on to the markers, you can see that we've got these little familiar looking guys kind of toting books around, chomping on something. I think they're really neat, like the little pot belly kind of gargoyles that got a little chest with them. You know what I mean? It's just a little bit of treasure kind of impishly running away. Yeah, I think like, the detail, the facial stuff is great. And you know, I think it's just a nice kind of little extra add, uh, especially for your Grave Lords, um, for your Grave Lords armies for sure. Now they've got, instead of a swarm, they've got kind of, you know, a little bit larger, kind of rat-looking guys here. I love that they're all kind of zombified and decrepit. 
just pull the dog hair off. Uh, they're all kind of zombified and decrepit, and you can see the, you know, the skeletons in there. It'll give a lot of visual interest against, you know, just that brown wash that they typically get. So having these guys kind of all zombified is is pretty cool. Little gravestones we saw before. Um, they are uh, a little bit fragile in the sense that they're pretty thin, but I don't think they're going to be too bad because they're really not leaving the ground all that much. Uh, you know, you got the little flowers at the graveside, um, which is nice because it actually kind of matches what's going on with the uh, with the new zombies, with the flowers and the and the and the coffins, kind of you know the top parts of the coffins and all of that. I like the candles on top. So there's actually a little bit of you know artistry kind of going on even with these guys. They've got the the bell there, just nice, like just nice and clean. And decent little 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 bits here. And again, they'll probably end up just being, uh, you know, just kind of like unit fillers to follow my guys around. So no problems there. It extends out that kind of new zombie aesthetic. Now these guys are, um, these guys are more kind of like an objective, kind of a post or something like that. You can see that the you got the the crow or the raven here carrying the key. I think that's pretty nice, actually. It's a neat little detail. There's keys kind of all throughout the Soul Blight uh, stuff, the Grave Lords, and of course the Night Haunt. Um, there's that method of keys kind of unlocking the other world, or you know, kind of unlocking the the coffins, things like that. I think that's pretty cool. You can see they got candles on the side here as well. Like there's a whole lot of artistry, you know, the creeping vine that comes up. There's a whole lot of artistry in here, and if we got you know did a nice job with our colors, they could really stand out. But again, gonna end up probably being unit fillers, or we can even use them as objectives. You know, it's not too bad. It's not too far of a reach to kind of get those in for sure. Uh, I got the two guys hanging up here. Nice use of the extra sprue, um, where you can see uh, you got the same kind of base, uh, but the different kind of skeletal bit on there. Uh, every time I see this, though, it just it's, it seems like they're pointing at each other to see who farted, uh, which is hilarious. Um, you know, in the games and all that, there'd be kind of a pointy, you know, kind of icon. This would be nice kind of on a road, uh, you know, if we had two guys hanging up on a, on a narrative piece where, you know, they're pointing you down the road, something like that. So definitely some narrative, uh, you know, kind of capabilities with these guys. You'll see here, I was a little reluctant to go in and, you know, really hammer away at the extra little bits of um, kind of flash and sprue left over just because their arms are just so fragile. Um, I like that they're kind of bonded at the bottom to the base, uh, which makes them you know less kind of fragile and wobbly as you go. But all in all, actually, I think there's a lot going on here that's you know really worthwhile. Now, one of the stars of the show here is the new uh, zombies that they've come out with. I've got piles and piles of older zombies. Like I think I've got like 60 of them painted up now, uh, and so I'm going to get towards that 70 mark fairly soon. Um, but I want to take a bit of time and talk about how cool these are. I know they don't entirely match the, the aesthetic of before. I like how they have the gravestones that are in here and they kind of match the gravestones that we saw before. You can see the flowers there, you know, leftover candles, the, you know, the, the wood kind of growing through uh, where the gravestone is here. But I thought what a neat uh, artistic kind of choice to have those roots and stuff growing through the zombies themselves like what would happen if these guys just got up and left now I'm not sure if they'd be face down in the coffins necessarily but maybe while they're trying to push with their backs to get out but I just love the fact that you know the the, the roots are kind of growing through the mouth um, and it is really reflected in you know the zombie and this is what would happen if they tried to kind of pry and work their way out now again you can see here that there's loads of duplication but what I do like is they've given you just, just these little bits of, of change, just these little bits of, of variation. I don't know if you can see here, uh, but one kind of the, you know, one piece kind of goes up, uh, one piece kind of goes down, and it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but they have added that variation kind of throughout. For example, here again, we've got you know kind of the zombie here with the you know <laughs> the note kind of scrolled in, and you can see that at the top you got the one plank and then this other guy you got the plank that's a little bit longer now again all these little details when you put them into a big horde of zombies I mean you won't even see the duplication uh, and I really like the fact that you know they've got just a little bit because you're seeing it from above just a little bit of visual variety uh, to make it change just a just a tiny little bit so if you've got loads and loads of these guys it'll work out just fine just fine 
but some of the stuff again the roots kind of coming through this person's been hanged uh, so you can see the noose around the neck like just beautifully done um, you know having the the crow the raven kind of sitting up here uh, again with the the roots kind of coming through and it gives them almost like um, kind of a demony tentacly kind of look to them as well as they're kind of shambling across the battlefield uh, candles up top so although these are going to take a little bit more effort to paint um, I'll definitely be mixing these guys in with uh, the rest of my uh, other zombies and I think they'll fit right in with the general aesthetic as long as you keep those paint tones you know kind of the same I'll probably do a painting tutorial specifically on painting zombies uh, with contrast paints and kind of you know the new zombies in 2021 here yeah I love this this kind of hunched over you know this kind of labored burden with uh, you know the tombstone on top I love the you know the script work in here I mean these things were pretty much made for contrast they're nice and fluid uh, in terms of like hair and fabric and and all of that. So I'm really liking uh, These ones in here. I like the, the the kind of the fencing that's across the top You know stuff that's been abandoned on the fence A uh, little little kind of bell up top to hear them kind of dingling around so you know where your zombie is I think this is amazing. I, I really like these these models um, again, I don't know if uh, you know, speed painting a zillion of these is going to be uh, super easy, but we'll see once we get our kind of painting tutorial all done up and ready to go. But anyways, new zombies are fantastic. Really, really liking them. Now, you can't talk about the zombies without getting into the skeleton side of things. So the death rattle skeletons, um, again, fantastic new resculpts. Uh, loads more animation than you had with the old skeletons um, when they did the next generation of skeletons after that the plastic ones they had lots of character they had armor and horns and things like that I thought they were pretty cool but these guys look fantastic they really look kind of postured and it's it's kind of one of those things that you can only do in these like you know push fit kits where you get this like super big posturing uh, because you can't really have the one size fits all or that kind of multi-purpose kit uh, with 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 you know and, and maintain some of this like really kind of grand uh, posing but I really do love the look and feel of these guys the flavor is absolutely fantastic uh, my biggest criticism would be just the fragility of these these spears um, everything else even though it's kind of breaks down to small little individual bits it seems to be fairly well uh, protected but even walking around with broken spears isn't that really that big of a deal now uh, you know with the weapons all kind of being combined so I can just fire these guys into my existing uh, skeletal hordes which is great um, you'll see again that there's a lot of duplication going on um, you'll see this guy here I love the, the kind of the big saber that's kicking off the shields are really nice and ornate as opposed to this those wooden plank shields that you've seen uh, kind of in the past and again loads of contrast here uh you know you know kind of uh, contrast capable fabrics and you know just kind of stuff blowing in the breeze so everything's flowing so i think that's really cool uh what's nice to have is if you guys are mixing these in with your other skeletons what i really like is that you've got a bit more kind of ornamentation and color opportunity here as opposed to just having piles of the actual skeletons themselves you notice that there's not a lot of skeleton showing it's mostly just armor and and cloth and shield and sword and helmet so I think it'd be a nice you know kind of just toss in there and mix them all up again some great animation on these guys uh, you know kind of leaning forward bringing it on cheering you know screaming and yelling without making a sound kind of creepy and eerily um, but again very ornate kind of shields you could even if you've got the regular skeletons you could just use these guys as grave guard and they would absolutely absolutely fit the bill because they're all ornate and you know they'd be super colorful whatever colors you choose to to use for them so again some of them are nice because you can see here that with the the shortening effective shortening of the spears here where you know you don't have a whole lot of you know just kind of stand out stuff uh, it's actually a little bit more rigid which i think is pretty cool some ingenious use here of the uh the robes kind of coming over and kind of you know touching that spear so that it gives you a bit more stability i really really like that and then of course using the um using the the similar uh kind of base here uh just having different faces on them uh just kind of uh, like front plates or whatever uh, you can get some nice unique 
you know, you got a banner in here. And again, it's actually fairly, it's not as brittle as you think. And again, very sneakily, whoops, very sneakily, uh, you know, kind of tying in the spike on the helmet uh, to the banner to give it just a little bit more, more stability. And again, of course, your, your hero guy or whichever. I don't even think they have uh, kind of the sergeants or, or squad heroes anymore. Um, and with AOS 3, it's going to make a big difference because they can't issue commands. So uh, that'll be a little bit of an interesting uh, take on things. But beautiful. Like, the skeletons are great. And uh, again, great uh, Grave Guard. I know the Grave Guard are pretty pretty amazing in the new edition. So loving these guys as well. Next up on our list here, we have our Virkos Bloodborne. And uh, these guys are just close combat monsters, right? They're just super fast. Um, and they just have done such an amazing job with these guys. They are literally just sheer hunters. Um, you know, they're just kind of pure killing instinct. Uh, you know, they've got them all kind of lithe and just kind of, you know, jumpy. They look super nimble in all the poses that they do. Uh, with the hair and everything, they got loads of animation. You know, just kind of hanging from on high. That kind of terrifying could come from from anywhere. Even on the bases, we've got all the kind of components. We've got the skulls because it's G Dub. You know, we've got our candles, we've got our vines, and we've got kind of our crumbling architecture, which I think is just is just spectacular. And so you've got the fur on them, kind of that feral, kind of you know, just jumping out, uh, you know, hunting in the dark kind of thing. I love I love these models. Um, I don't know what they're like for unit stats and all that, but I mean, I love them. You know, they've got that kind of hunched over, you know, ready to, to pounce kind of pose. Uh, and they've got these animalistic claws, which are really, really, you know, kind of violent and, and, and nice as well. You see, they got the hair, you know, kind of blowing back at the top and kind of flowing, it, you know, back on all of these guys here. It just looks so kind of predatory you know what i mean and you know just kind of sneaking through the cities the broken down cities at night and just hunting for prey now the other subtle thing is i love the fact that they've got the, the swords as well so instead of them just being supremely kind of animalistic in teeth and claws uh, which is which is pretty terrifying uh, they've also got kind of an intelligence and a dexterity about them as hinted by the swords there so I think these guys are really neat. I like. I, I really, I really dig them. Uh, they're a little fragile. Like if you look at the swords, or you look at the hair, or you look at the joints to the, you know, kind of them pouncing and moving around. At least these guys are all kind of three points connected. Um, but this one here is particularly uh, fragile. But oh man, like they are awesome. They are really, really cool. And it's nice because you're not moving a thousand of these guys, so they'll be kind of a signature, you know, kind of three-person unit. And uh, just kind of bolting and dashing from in behind and ripping guys apart. Love it. Like really, really cool. Now, of course, uh, because they're not having this, the sergeants and all that, we've got this really kind of cool uh, watch captain uh, Halgrim. And again, I love the fact that you've got, you know, all kind of all that armor and he's got that classic heroic pose kind of leading them forward. You know, nice extended cape kind of going up and, you know, this tattered cape kind of going up in the wind. And, you know, everything from, you know, big gloves where you can see little bits of skeleton. You got his armor coming through here, you know, just standing astride that kind of busted up uh, ancient, like crumbling architecture. Uh, it's really, really cool. I like the halberd here, too. I really like the way, again, that it's kind of not as vulnerable to being tapped or broken. Uh, you'll see the sword here has got a little bit of wobble, but in, in, in actuality, it's all fairly durable. I love this model too. Like it just gives off such a great uh, vibe of him kind of leading and pushing everybody forward. Uh, you know, you get little details uh, like on the face there, you see the patch. Um, you'll see, you know, just like the, 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 the armor. Like this person was clearly a knight at some point in time, um, but has arisen to kind of fight for Nagash and the uh, Grave Lords. I think this is great. I, like, I really like this model. Now, Gorslav, the Gravekeeper, um, <laughs> I think it's really neat. I like the fact that he's blind. I think that's incredible. Uh, I think that he just, you know, he just can't see. I think that's, I think that's just kind of terrifying that he comes after stuff. He's got this big kind of hook to kind of pull zombies out and open up the coffins, which you can see him doing here. Um, I love the, the big kind of shovel that is going through and just kind of slowly digging up and helping out uh, the minions to come forward. 
He's got his noose in here and another hook at the back. Uh, you know, just nothing says more badass than having a couple of, you know, wrought iron uh, spikes in your back as you're, as you're moseying around. Um, it's, in terms of painting the model, he's going to be all skin tones and kind of this, uh, you know, this, this kind of long robe here. Uh, you see keys all over. So all he does is go around and kind of bring up, uh, you know, the dead from the ground love it like just such a neat model and you know massive presence i mean this is a 40 mil base there's there's loads of guy here uh and if you can put him against zombies he's definitely going to stand out which i think is is pretty fantastic really nice use here um so this guy's going to be great to paint out and i love that they all kind of come in a set which i'll talk about in a second here next up we have this really cool death wizard in Targilius here uh they call him the chamberlain which is neat and in his attacks profile, he doesn't even have attacks. It's, it's claws and fangs that are in here. So he's got all these vermin that kind of accompany him. You see he's got his you know, rat up top here, his little kind of you know, tiny wolf that's in here. And he doesn't really even have like an attack attack. He's just kind of going about doing his thing, but he's protected by all his little kind of little beasts and animals. I think that's pretty amazing, actually. I think that's really, really good. Um, I don't know if he's actually dead, if that makes any sense. I don't know if he's actually dead in the in the lore, um, but he does look like he was, you know, you know, <laughs> he's wearing his uh, his his lock here as a as a, as a or his I guess a stock uh, as as kind of a badge of honor. You know, I love the candle here with the dripping wax and how he's just got this kind of. You know, he's, you can picture this guy walking around the battlefield just glowing as you go. He's also got that kind of similar key motif that's in there. He's got uh, this, you know, scroll in the back that's pegged to his back. Is it pegged to his back? It's probably pegged to his back. Maybe he's dead. We don't know yet. Um, I don't know yet. We'll, we'll figure it out as time kind of goes along when I need to paint him. But uh, I think it's just great this, this kind of her heretic you know, wizard has been, uh, you know, kind of locked up and then freed by the forces here. We got bats, you've got all kinds of really cool and unique, interesting things with his little wizardy hat on there. Um, fragility wise, I do like the fact that they've done again, a couple little tiny cheats. You can see the back of the bird here and the tail of the rat, they touch each other, uh, which I would have glued together anyways, if I could have, uh, just to add a little bit more strength to those, you know, really light uh, kind of joins. But just a really neat model, this guy wandering around with some candles, surrounded by nothing but dead people. But he's he's totally cool, man. He's good with it. He's like a, he's like a necromancer in training, I guess. But anyway, neat, neat kind of model, neat kind of fluff. Now the Varskir model is uh, you know significantly large. Um, I actually didn't know it was that big, but if I put a zombie next to him, uh, he's actually you know double the size at least. And I think that's pretty cool. Like, I think it's, it's nice to have, you know, a little bit of kind of height and perspective and just this massive close combat monster. Uh, I like how it's so totally, you know, kind of recklessly abandoned any humanity and it is turned into this massive, you know, kind of furred, kind of bat winged killing machine. What a lot of fun, like just, just this is a really cool model. Uh, painting's gonna be a breeze, this flesh tones and kind of hair, you know, facial features, things like that. I like the little rat run for its life, like what the heck's going on, or maybe looking to pick up a quick meal when he tears something apart, uh, to the point where he's got a tail, like just a complete abandonment um, to to just kind of bestial kind of fury. I think this is incredible. Like it's just a really nice, really nice model. And it gives a nice sense of scale to the group, which again, you have to kind of buy as a group. I'm really like liking the fact that you buy them as a group. I thought, oh man, that's kind of a crappy tax to have. And then you look at the models all together and you look at the models in terms of their stats and how they work. And you could honestly start with that as a really healthy base and then just dive into, you know, zombies and skeletons to kind of finish it out. So I think actually, I don't think it's too bad. I think it's a great way to kind of start off. And they got loads of history and they got loads of synergies. So really, really cool. What a beast, literally. <laughs> it's just awesome. <laughs> okay, next up you've got Radokar and you've got the Kasargi, uh, you know, the, the night guard that kind of come along with them. Um, we'll start with the Kasargi guys. Man, like, <laughs> like Mongolian ogres with big, big axes. I think these guys are one of my favorite parts of this whole thing. These kind of 
ogre skeletons um but look at their coats you know they're like again it shows like this massive sophistication they got gloves and all that and even if they weren't entirely sophisticated before um now they you know kind of form the night guard with the big furry hats and i like that you got like you know little bits of kind of disheveled skin on the other side of these these big great coats here you got your little rat with the key which I think is great. Uh, this guy's holding the keys as well. And they just have this fantastic feeling with the punched out teeth and the beards and all that. But what a great, great set of models. These are gonna be amazing to paint. And there's just something about the posture of these guys. Um, and they just kind of go in as a bit of a supplement, but I mean, there's just something amazing about <laughs> the posture of these guys. And they're amazing kind of you know, coats for, you know, being out on the Mongolian kind of step. I mean, I, <laughs> I think that it's absolutely spectacular. Really, really good. Um, and of course, it wouldn't be complete without the person they're protecting. Uh, Radikar is, uh, what a neat model. Just kind of got the big kind of um, Cossack pants, right? You can see the big furry hat. And then, of course, you know, the belt work that's in here. You've got the big wolf pelts going on top. And just just great now again painting these the, the big highlights gonna be the wolf pelts uh, that's what you're gonna see for the most part because they're just so uh, covered up but of course you know is the wolf so there you go um, I like the little tentacles kind of you know the little thorns kind of coming up from the ground ah oh, great model like really really cool the big you know kind of saber in here and uh, oh man these guys are all gonna look so good uh, so good on the tabletop. But Radicar is just absolutely a monster on the table. And the other Radicar model I would like to get as well with all the wolves kind of circling around. Um, but for now, when you have to buy these guys in the big uh, set, um, in terms of kind of what you have to do to get uh, you know them on the table, uh, it's like a bunch of points. And I wasn't really a big fan of that initially. I thought, well... I was really disappointed that I couldn't kind of pick and choose my characters. But then you kind of look at all the stats overlapping together and I really liked, you know, the thought of all these guys together, it's just a big band of heroes and then, you know, taking just the all the all the hordes that, you know, kind of support them. And I think it's a great start to an army. Absolutely, absolutely great start to an army. So, um the total number of uh pieces that you get with this is is kind of insane so there's your hq block uh here's your kind of zombies that you get uh in the set um what else we got we got our skeletons that are in here okay we've got uh all of our kind of objective -y, uh type stuff here uh, i know a few little kind of terrain objective pieces you know our rats and all that and again, you can see just having rats mixed in, I'm sure it would you know be good to count for models and all that. Just make sure they're the first ones to go, I suppose. Uh, you got your rat swarms, you've got your... <laughs> so just from the bad guys alone, uh, you've got a gajillion models here. Um, and I love it. I mean, it's great. Like, what a great value. Uh, the set itself was pretty pricey, um, even by GW standards. I think it was a little bit expensive. Um, but you do get a ton of models. It'd be nice if we could use uh, the bat swarms. And nobody took bat swarms. Like, they weren't super crazy effective. Uh, or the rats or something like that. It'd be great if we could use those in a game. But maybe we're not too far off. Maybe they'll get released as a set with a war scroll. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. But in general, man, you get loads and loads of plastic. So big thumbs up from the bad guys. Uh, I'm going to do the Heroes uh, review next, and that's it for this one. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope it was of value. And uh, if you like it, obviously, jab, smash, destroy that like button. Um, consume the like button's blood. Uh, and then um, if you want more information uh, as time goes on and you want to kind of see more videos like this, uh, grab that subscribe button, hit the little bell, uh, and then you'll get notifications of all the future videos. Uh, you can also join the channel if you want to support. Uh, obviously, this stuff is not uh, super cheap, uh, but there's a big join button there you can blap on and uh, just make a small contribution towards the channel. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll catch you in the next video.